welcome back to my channel today whoa lots of sun today is like one of those days it's the weekend and you know when you just have 7,000 errands because you haven't done them and my house is a disaster because all of those errands seem to be happening in my space making me really nervous so Alex and I are planning to go camping on his week off so like there's like camping food stuff tent camping gear here and then like these have to be fixed because we're fixing the bookshelves we've just printed our wedding photos which took a whole year for me to get around to we've got like laundry going on there's just a lot so I thought I would chat to you today about um, metformin versus berberine and I'll do it while I'm doing my errands because we are in tight timing, tight timing. And I can't, I can't do things separately today. So we're just gonna have a chat. I'm gonna put you down here and we're just gonna have a chat while I do my laundry. Before we continue, I really want to thank Bed Story for sponsoring this video. Thank you to them so much. They are an amazing mattress company. So the mattress that they sent me is a queen mattress and it's a foam um, spring mattress hybrid, which is really cool. I didn't really know that those existed. Petrified. I hate balloons specifically because of popping balloons like it's a legitimate fear like I cannot be around people who are like squishing popping balloons if you could feel my heart right now but basically it just means that there's springs as well as foam so you kind of get best of both worlds and what I really like about this mattress too is like obviously I live in an apartment, I live somewhere small, and this mattress was kind of made for smaller areas. So um, small beds, bunk beds, apartments. And I also really like that it comes in one of those like cool nifty boxes that mattresses seem to be coming in now because I don't have a car and so having someone deliver a full size mattress to my place is just kind of an issue. So this makes it really cool that I can just have it in a little box, get it delivered right to my door, it unfolds, it's vacuum sealed, and it just kind of inflates, and it takes about 48 hours for it to go to its it, like maximum height, basically. So yeah, thank you to Bed Story for sending this to me, and I will link all the information down below, including the mattress and pillows that you see in this video. Like, I don't know, is it just me where I just feel like if my place is a disaster? <sighs> so, first of all, what is berberine? What is metformin? Many of you who have PCOS may have been um, asked or prescribed metformin from your doctor. I know I did. Um, and if you went to a naturopath, they might suggest berberine. The berberine that I'm using right now is called the Simple Wonders berberine. It looks like this. I think I had it in another video as well. But I... But I mean, any berberine will work. Um, I, this one's cool because it has cinnamon in it and cinnamon lowers, helps lower your blood sugars as well. So that's kind of like a double whammy. But some people are like, what is the difference? What's the ish? Are they the same? Are they different? And I'm here to answer all the questions. First of all, what is the purpose of metformin? and slash berberine and the main purpose of them is to lower your blood glucose levels lower your insulin levels pcos is now their research has found that pcos is predominantly an insulin resistance syndrome because like i i knew that insulin resistance was part of pcos but i didn't realize it's the root cause of pcos so women who have insulin uh resistance 
are these women that are developing PCOS-like symptoms. They're also finding that PCOS is genetic, which is also really cool. That being said, women with PCOS tend to have higher levels of insulin versus a regular healthy woman, and because of that, we tend to gain weight faster, store a lot of fat, have difficulty losing weight, have difficulty gaining muscle, all the things that come with insulin resistance. Now, basically, insulin is a fat storage hormone. So yay for us. <laughs> Love this for us. Basically, insulin tends to store fat predominantly, higher insulin levels, sorry, tend to store fat in the belly region, which is why women with PCOS, if they're gaining weight rapidly, you tend to get it in your abdominal area versus other parts of your body. You can obviously store fat everywhere in your body, but that seems to be the most common area. High insulin levels also tell your ovaries, your ovaries, your ovaries to produce more testosterone, which is why women with PCOS tend to have higher androgen levels, meaning facial hair, um, acne, all those things, all those lovely symptoms that we just cannot live without. Thank you. Thank you, PCOS gods. So basically, all of these symptoms and all of the reasons why you might have higher testosterone and or androgen levels are due to higher amounts of insulin. Now, a lot of doctors in the past have prescribed metformin to women with PCOS. Why? Because metformin is used for people who are pre-diabetic or diabetic because it helps control those insulin levels, which like in theory makes sense because if PCOS is an insulin sensitive symptom of PCOS, I could see why doctors were like, hey, like this actually can correlate and help. So um, for a while, and I think even now, doctors were prescribing metformin when a woman got diagnosed with PCOS. Usually this was after blood work and all the tests were done. And metformin was then prescribed to help women lose weight as well as control their glucose levels. So basically the way that metformin works is it lowers your hemoglobin A1C. What does that mean? No one knows. No one knows. This is just me in the journals and the articles, which I will link all below for you. So if you ladies want to read, I only post scholarly journals usually because that's where I read the research. Um, I'll post those all in the description, bar, the description box below so you guys can read for yourself. Basically, metformin helps with your sensitivity to insulin levels. And it was actually one of the very first drugs to accomplish this, which is why it was prescribed often to pre-diabetic and diabetic people. People. And I, like I said, I guess doctors made the correlation that people with PCOS also have insulin sensi sensitivity, therefore metformin should work. There are two issues with metformin. One, there's a lot of gastrointestinal, oh, I should be doing my laundry, gastrointestinal um, issues that come around metformin. So a lot of women report having really bad stomach pain, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, all that kind of fun stuff. I know when I was on metformin, um, I just felt like I was gonna yak all the time. Like I just, I remember vividly having to get off the subway to run to a garbage bin to throw up because I was that nauseous, which made me stop taking it, obviously. A lot of women actually report that and quite frequently on my channel, I get a lot of you saying metformin made me really sick or it gave me like bad stomach cramps or whatever. So you're not alone. That has been reported as one of the, the main, main symptoms of, um, metformin. It technically is supposed to help you lose weight according to like the drug itself and to doctors, but there's some conflicting evidence with that. New science basically says that there's no correlation or like barely any correlation of weight loss with women and PCOS and metformin. Which is tragic because if you're going through all of those symptoms thinking that you know what it's better to go through those symptoms and reap the benefits of lower lowering my insulin slash losing weight people are staying on it for that reason but however there have been like several several studies out that show that like there's just no correlation um in it helping women with pcos however they did find that it does help reduce your androgen levels basically 
by circulating your insulin better. So it does, it does work for insulin sensitivity. Um, it doesn't work as well as those with diabetes, but it does work because it helps circulate your insulin better. That helps with a bunch of other PCOS symptoms. So it's been shown to make periods more regular, increase your fertility, help ovulation. And they actually found that uh, metformin helped women who were on doing IVF treatments to have better success. Um, to the point now where they're thinking women with PCOS or with insulin issues should continue taking metformin while they're pregnant because it's helping with miscarriage rates. So I guess, because um, obviously us with PCOS have infertility issues and have a lot of a uh, lot of high chance of losing a child, and so I guess they're finding that that is helping women carry to term, which is amazing. So. Is metformin not good for PCOS? It's not as good as doctors portray it to be. However, it does help in other aspects, so be it. So that's one option. Your other option, so if you go to a naturopath, they will, because they don't prescribe medication, they will often um, suggest or prescribe berberine. Now, I was only introduced to berberine a few years ago when I went the naturopath route for the first time, and when I did research, and I'll put this link below too, there's a website called examine.com and basically through peer-reviewed journals, they actually look at different medications and see if they're like good for you or not. Anyway, it's pretty amazing. And so before I started taking berberine, I went on this website and it was like, berberine is just as effective as metformin. So I was like, oh, that's really cool because normally obviously prescription medication sometimes works much more strong i can't talk at all today works stronger than supplements so i was like okay sweet i'll try it out with berberine now berberine again is used to lower your resting glucose so like lower your insulin levels therefore helping with other symptoms of pcos including like weight loss, insulin ses sensitivity, menstrual regulation, all that jazz. So the same as berberine, uh, same as metformin. Um, however, berberine has the same gastrointestinal symptoms or side effects as metformin, which is like very strange. So to me, that says something about like the drug itself trying to lower your insulin for some reason has an effect on your system basically the same kind of side effects were shown with women taking berberine and that means um nausea stomach cramps diarrhea constipation excess farting love that all that jazz was basically the same so symptom wise however so when i took when i took berberine and i still take berberine i haven't experienced any of those symptoms but quite a number of you have said that you feel quite sick taking berberine when my naturopath gave it to me she suggested taking it after a meal if i was feeling sick i never did but i tell you guys that all the time if you're feeling sick maybe try taking it after a full stomach and if you still don't feel good then just don't take it because it's just i don't know you have to kind of assess what you want. I mean, I'm not your doctor. Talk to your doctor and ask them what you think if there's an alternative. The cool thing with berberine is that it was also shown to have anti-inflammation uh, benefits, which is really good because women who have PCOS tend to have chronic low-grade inflammation. So that's kind of cool. Besides anti-inflammation, um, berberine was also shown to help with uh, lowering your cholesterol, your bad cholesterol, which is amazing, again, because women with PCOS tend to have higher rates of cholesterol. So um, it tends to help with that as well. So basically, berberine is the same as metformin, same side effects. It also helps with all those things I talked about with metformin, but on top of that, it helps with inflammation and it helps with immunity and it also helps with lowering your cholesterol. So that's really great news. But from my experience, I prefer, berberine was just better on my system than metformin. I don't know, I feel like maybe try metformin and if it like, if it works for you symptom wise, maybe go with that one because you're not spending money. But if you don't have a drug plan, then try berberine. Both 
pretty much the same. At the end of the day, I encourage everybody to talk to a doctor <laughs> because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a naturopath, and I have to disclaim that on here as well. I'm just talking from my personal experience with both um, medications, and I'm just kind of telling you the pros and cons of both. But at the end of the day, that's a conversation that you need to have with your healthcare provider and then make an educated decision based off that. Please remember to like and subscribe because it really helps support my channel and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.